So now in this video, we're going to use an op amp as a peak detector. That's how we have it wired up. We're going to use a single supply. The LM358 is a single supply op amp. It also works with dual or split supply. There's one. There's actually a two op amps, I should say, in the integrated circuit. We're just going to use one of them. And so single supply means we have a positive voltage in relationship to ground. There's also dual or split supply power where you have ground and also a negative voltage in addition to the positive. But here we're just going to use the positive voltage, single supply. So it's a peak detector. That means when we have zero volts at the ground and we have uh, zero volts at the capacitor, everything zero volts, then we raise the voltage, let's say, to four volts. We're going to have about 4.6 volts here because that's what we're going to need to get about four volts right there. That'll go back to the inverting input. That's not inverting. That's inverting. The op amp output does what it can when you have feedback going through the inverting input to hold those voltages the same. Also, the capacitor will charge up to that voltage. And we're going to measure the voltage. And so that should not really affect the circuit hardly at all. Now, if we lower the voltage, the output's going to lower its voltage because it's going to try to get the inverting input to the same voltage as the non-inverting input. But now we have the diode here. The capacitor is charged to a voltage. It cannot discharge that way through the rectifier diode. It is reverse bias right now. That's where it blocks current from flowing. So the capacitor holds its voltage and when we measure it we'll see that voltage held to what we had set there. And here we have the circuit on the board. So there's an LM358. We have to power the integrated circuit. That's going to the positive side of the power supply. Pin number 8 up there and then pin number 4 to the negative side of the power supply. There's an op amp over here that's a little easier to see right now. There's the output, the inverting input, non-inverting input. So the wiring is the same here except for it's shuffled up one. So we got output, inverting input, and then non-inverting input. At the non-inverting input we have our trim pot set to zero volts right now. The capacitor should also be zero volts. I discharged it. But in any case, here we got zero. If we turn it all the way up there, we'll get to nine, since we're using a nine volt power supply. There is where the wiper connects to give us our voltage divider right there. I assume you already know about that trim pot voltage dividers. That's going to the non-inverting input. Now, the output, we have the diode. There's a gray band right there. That's the cathode. And so when the output is more positive, current can flow through that way. But when this side is more positive than the output, it cannot flow that way. It's a diode. But in any case, it'll output until the voltage, it'll charge the capacitor, until that voltage with this feedback to the inverting input is equal to those two. The output will be high. And then uh, when we lower the trim pot, the output will go low, but it won't matter. We'll have a higher voltage there. It will not go through the diode. It will hold relatively well. So pretty straightforward. This is a uh, 200 and... Uh, I mean 470, sorry, microfarad capacitor right there, 470, and we could charge it up to 50 volts if we wanted to. It is polarized, that side has to be more negative, and so we're putting it to the negative rail. Pretty straightforward. Now, we will do a quick uh, test of this. So power supply is set to 9 volts, output is on right now, and uh, if that says off, then the output is not powering anything. So what we can do is uh, first go to the capacitor, and raise the uh, voltage right there to uh, let's say 4 volts again so that is the voltage of the capacitor now and the trim pot if we go to the output though we're going to see it bounce it around so I think it's doing that because it kind of just has to spit a little bit of current very little but for brief periods of times it has to raise its voltage enough to get the capacitor to uh, hold its charge it will drift down over time now I'm going to uh, lower the voltage of the uh, trim pot. You can see it stays down. Let's raise it up to 5. So that was the peak 4. Now we raise it to 5 and it's holding at 5 right there. So what I'm going to have to do to uh, discharge it, you can see that it is discharging over time. But uh, one of the things I'm going to do, you could make a direct connection to the uh, output. Then you'd get the exact voltage of the output and the current won't flow very long. Or you could just take a... Uh, resistor. I'm going to use a 1 kilo ohm resistor so lower value would uh, discharge it quicker but uh, there you can see how it discharged. So I'll uh, raise this up again and I realized I was cutting off that view but uh, you could see what I was doing. So 
Now you won't see what I'm doing as good, but you'll see the voltage drop down right there, the curve in uh, real time. So you could discharge it like that if you want. Just make sure you don't short circuit the uh, capacitor if the output is providing current. That'll be a short circuit. Luckily, op amps usually don't get damaged by uh, short circuits, but uh, better to not do them to begin with. But in any case, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting. Click like, subscribe, the bell, all that. Donate to Patreon if you can. That helps out the most. But just watching videos helps out a ton. I have links down in the description for everything. I'll see you in the next video.